Hi, I'm Dr. Wooler. I've talked before about inflammation in the brain and what's happening with respects to autism, uh, what we call neurological inflammation, and the advancing research that is emerging with respects to this important topic. Now, there's been a lot of research projects in the past, you know, out of uh, John Hopkins University and other research facilities showing that in autism there tends to be a higher prevalence of neuroinflammatory markers uh, likely affecting individuals on the autism spectrum more uh, adversely. Well, it turns out that <clears throat> there is a cell in the brain or a system in the brain called microglia. Microglia are part of the immune system um, function of the brain and the central nervous system. And in many individuals with autism, there appears to be what's called microglia activation, where the microglia become activated but don't turn off. Um, they can become activated from a virus, from a bacteria. They can become activated from a potential chemical reaction. Um, there's been some cases where it's shown that certain vaccines may be a contributing factor to microglia activation. When the system doesn't turn off, it leads to chronic inflammation. And essentially the destruction of what are called synapses. Synapses are these small spaces in between nerve cells where the neurochemicals are transferred from one nerve cell to the next as a communication link. So we get a chemical reaction across the synapse creating an electrical chemical reaction in the corresponding nerve cell. So anything that's going to affect the synapse will essentially affect chemical transportation from one brain region to the next and electrical impulse activation in the brain as well. So there's not just one thing that causes microglia activation, but it's something that should be on your radar, it's something to consider for your child on the autism spectrum, something that may be con a contributing factor to their overall condition. Whether your child had a vaccine reaction in the past that you felt happen, whether they had an infection at some point where things just never normalized, um, or they've had chronic immune problems throughout their life, whether it's a lot of food sensitivities, gut problems, etc., you could be looking at a potential of microglia activation. Now, there's a many different remedies that have been used to try to alter this, um, specifically with respect to inflammation in the brain. Um, steroids are something that is often used um, to try to decrease inflammation in anybody who has inflammation throughout the body, um, and it's been known to help in a specific condition called Landau-Kleffner syndrome, where individuals have high reactivity to certain blood vessels in the brain that contribute to language problems and seizures. Steroids are one of the treatments for that. There's evidence that ibuprofen can be helpful. Doing you know, 10 to 15 days of ibuprofen as a trial, you know, seven and a half to 10 milligrams per kilogram, um, you know, split dose three times a day has been helpful as well. Um, not necessarily just as a one-time treatment, but a course of treatment over time has been shown to help benefit some kids on the spectrum with respects to repetitive behavior and um, communication and language, etc. One of the major therapies that's been used to help with inflammatory problems in autism um, is hyperbaric oxygen therapy because hyperbaric oxygen therapy not only helps to bring down inflammation, it helps to increase oxygen function at the cellular level. So there's a lot of ways of approaching it. As I mentioned before, there's a lot of emerging information about this. So microglia activation or, uh, um, and brain inflammation is n not new information, but it's important information to understand with respect to autism and something that I, I deeply look into with any of the patients um, that I work with. Thanks.